Okay, hello and welcome to episode 26 of Dano Says So. Uh, today is only the third time I've spoken to today's guest, and they've all been within the framework of national current events and this podcast. And uh, various things in the politics of certain situations and conversations had kept derailing our chance to really sit down and knock one of these out in pure fashion. Um, to the unanointed, Shana is the, is the vocalist of War on Women and the author of Making Spaces Safer, and I'm thrilled to have her. So, Sean Potter, thank you for doing this. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah. So, in November, or it might have even been the end of September, but just days before the, before the general election, uh, you and I spoke on the same panel with some very cool, very well-educated people um, with maybe similar political leanings to, to, you know, you and I, though, are, we're certainly not in lockstep with each other. And the prevailing opinion on that panel was, most of us were going to go blue no matter who with that vote. That mm. we were going to vote Dem, you know, regardless of our misgivings about about the two party system or about the Democrats or even about about Biden. How are you feeling about that, given the results of the election? And well, recent events? we can start. Yeah. With yeah, I mean, with hindsight, uh, it's easy to say. Well, my state of Maryland went blue. Um, and it would have without my bending to blue right. vote, um, which, you know, I'm not, I don't know. I, I, I still have a lot of complicated feelings about yeah. voting Democrat and for voting for any party that I don't believe in. <laughs> you're, you're a re are you a registered green? Is that what I remember? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, but like really, but the point is, is that we should all be able to vote for the party that we most believe in, you know? And sure. I think, I think that if more people on the left did that, they would not be voting Democratic. And so yeah. just acknowledging that um, we're, politics is so corrupt that we're forced to make um, shitty choices all the time. Right. To just... Right to just maintain the center, to maintain the status quo, right? Like not even necessarily things getting better. Um, but anyway, because of fear, which is probably why a lot of people maybe went from other parties to democratic out of fear. Um, and then also feeling responsibility for people that are more marginalized than me, that their votes have been suppressed, that, um, I, the opportunities aren't always there. Like I, I went ahead and voted uh, blue up and down the ticket uh, just to ensure a victory as much as possible. And also out of spite, I also wanted Trump to feel like a fucking loser, like right. head to toe. I wanted to be and, part of that 7 million gap. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, even that kind of feels good if I'm being honest. I think there's an easy argument to be made Oops, there's me knocking the studio on its side, meaning my $400 laptop. Um, I think there's an easy argument to be made that this particular president represented an at least semi-unique trauma to this country. And I think the events of the last week have borne that out. Um, I was very comfortable voting Dem, but you know, to be honest, most of my life I have voted Dem. Um, that said, you know, it's always been that Dem in name, lefty in statement thing that I, I get that internal con that internal conflict, you know that it's a it's it's a mainstream party and it's a it's it's a party that's part of the money money making business of politics. But I feel good about having been part of the seven million pile on. I think it's <laughs> a very real thing. I think the Republicans are going to fracture. I think they're in a circular fire, firing squad squad right now. And I think this might be the first time in my life where I'm really looking to see how I can apply myself to broadening the ballot. Mm. You know, I, I think I'm done predicting. Yeah, things are going to do because I don't under I don't I just don't understand how they can stick with the people they stick with that they can lie just lie. Uh, through their teeth all the time, misrepresent their constituents just to just to get money, just just to keep making money. Um, 
and and again i realize democrats do that too but at least like they'll like try to fix roads or <laughs> like fun do you, have school, you know like for, do you have any affection for uh, what what is, is least presented as the most progressive end of that caucus which would be bernie which would be aoc which would be the squad or is that still too far from the idea no i i'm i'm very down with diverse tactics right mm -hmm. and so people trying to change the system from within that is one of the things that is necessary mm -hmm. for actual change to occur i do understand that i don't i don't think it's like fully all that there is um and it can't be done on its own and and like everybody plays their part we need all the different tactics working at the same time to actually get the things done um but i i think that like thank goodness they're there right to say yo what about people can't eat like get them some stimulus money what the hell we can't live here if the planet burns up yeah. like like obviously someone should be saying that but frankly you know they are an outlier in their party mm -hmm. and 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 they should be the bare minimum they should be what people think by the same token they, it, it's funny they represent such a departure from the from the usual behavior on the part of the dems it was very easy for the right to 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 characterize them as you know just revolutionary whack jobs which, you know yeah it doesn't fly in the circles of the informed but it was an easy narrative to pitch yeah and then that just leads to people on the left like putting them on a pedestal and idolizing them and i i don't believe that any politician should be admired in that way <laughs> or thought of as uh should be idolized in any way um well let's go one further should anybody be idolized because let's say let's say let's say the ideal politician or somebody whose platform matches yours as close as you can imagine and they get in and they do well with it would you then be comfortable with that or does it more go to the nature that you know we come from a no heroes culture well yeah no like the then the thing to do is not to idolize them the thing to do is be like good you're doing your job that's great nice okay <laughs> punk rock through and through i'll, I'll take it <laughs> all right um that 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 is a good segue into other things that i would like to that i would like to cover here with you let's get into your book um and what's funny is when I started, you know, when I got to doing my investigation on it, it was not exactly what I expected. And I'll tell you why. I didn't realize it was so music centric. Ah. That it had a very specific focus. But you would be far better to describe it to the viewer than I would. So why don't you tell us about <laughs> making spaces safer? Making spaces safer. Um, it's it's a it's a guidebook for anyone that has any kind of role in any kind of space very okay. vague so far right very open um it's a guidebook for so many people to make whatever space they're inhabiting safer mm -hmm. for for people that are um usually having to put up with harassment or violence when they go to a public space mm -hmm. and so it's based on years of training venues of all kinds like even coffee shops and bookstores okay. and stuff uh, and safer space tactics and so it comes from real experience and and real uh, science on how the brain works when you're um, harassed or experience a traumatic event and and it has practical advice for how to be helpful if someone has been harassed uh, whether you work there whether you're also in the audience or another customer and you see it or in the case of music venues like sometimes you're the person on stage and so you you don't have the authority like of, of a security guard to kick them out yourself or, or have a you know talk them down um but you also have more power or a different kind of power than just some random person in the audience and so you, it's impact, just, the you impact the climate in the room agreed yeah and so it's like how whatever role you're in if something goes down if someone's being mistreated just for being who they are Mm -hmm. How can you help? And this book tells you exactly what to do and why and has tons of stories and, and anecdotal experience as well as science 
and uh, and examples of 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 how things could go. I mean, that's it's certainly an admirable pursuit, and it reminds me of my years in the Bay Area because really, it's not something that would happen in Orange County, California, on the level that I would like. So, uh, in a way that I'm sure you absolutely did not intend to. Thank you for taking me back. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, you know, what's funny is that, like, yeah, like uh, some of the tactics that are in the book, like I, I didn't invent, I didn't invent the five D's of bystander intervention, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't invent uh, grounding techniques when someone is having a panic attack or freaking out about mm -hmm. something. Um, but, and so a lot of, a lot of stuff, a lot of ideas comes from the underground or activist circles. Mm -hmm. um, and and I've played shows, you know, I've been playing shows since I was 14 years old and like mm -hmm. I'd go on tour and some random place in Ohio would have a like, no fucking harassment, no bigotry, no racism, or you're out, you know, sign. I'd be like, wow, that's amazing. And, and so this stuff has been going on, but my, my, my goal with the book was to sort of get everybody across mm -hmm. at least the States to this basic level mm -hmm. of, of, of safer for people, you know, to, to make it, to make it obvious that these ideas actually shouldn't be radical. They're, they're not actually that it's not that radical that if people come to your bar, mm -hmm. they should be able to have a good time and not be like completely fucked with mm -hmm. by someone else. And not only that, but have everyone else go, what do you want us to do about it? Mm -hmm. well, Just I've let seen... it happen. Right. I've seen where in doing that, you stated that you did make a conscious effort not to not to lapse into overly academic speak or yeah. into, into what, frankly, yeah, the, the activist's tongue is very real and can be alienating. Yeah. Um, that to me is refreshing, not because I am cynical about such things, but I have this big concern about the perfect being the enemy of the good. You've heard that phrase before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't see the upside in culling the herd, you know, by, by when you communicate to people who are at all interested in, in advancing their own mindset or understanding of the world around them, they're in a different space in that development than you are. It's yours to encourage them and to open the door, not narrow it and tighten the neck. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'll be like, ha ha, you don't know this, you idiot. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's like if we really want the world to to progress and become a better place, we have to welcome people into the fight. Right. I think that that's something that can happen in activist circles and academic circles. It's like, mm -hmm. um, why aren't you already at my level yet? Why don't you already know all this stuff that right. I just learned ten days ago? You know. Right. And and so I I have felt unwelcome in circles so myself for not knowing everything everybody else knew. I have felt dumb and wish someone had been like, oh, we're, oh, stack, that just means you, you're next in line. You know, like little things that I wish were explained to me that, that I don't, I don't like the feeling that, oh, everybody here knows what this is. Like, mm -hmm. am I, did I just totally miss something? It almost makes it a club. Yeah, and yeah. It, 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 it gives it a hint of elitism. And so I, I wanted to get rid of all that kind of jargon mm -hmm. and just and be be very plain uh in my language and you know it wasn't hard to not use a lot of academic language because i never went to college so <laughs> i quit community college after not a big deal. journalism for a year and a half so <laughs> <laughs> okay i guess i took a couple of years of community college but okay. mostly like asl classes so all i did all i did in, in junior college or in community college was meet other hardcore kids that's all that's the only productive thing that happened that's productive, I'd say. You know, yeah. I think half the half the people on my record label I used to sit around in the quad with and throw food at. You know, it's like that yeah. is, you know, depending on who you're throwing it at, that could be a hate crime. So be careful. Yeah, you know, time, you know, times are always moving forward. I'm hoping the, right. I'm hoping the forgiveness is there if I circle back to any of those food fights. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's get into let's get into some specifics that are. It's interesting. There's I'm betting there's more than a ten year age gap between you and I. But I feel like the conversations can be very fluid. Well, I'm almost How old are you? I'm almost 79 years old. No, I, come I'm on. I'm 53. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. 38. Yeah, okay. And I, hopefully, it, it, hopefully, looking at either one of us, it's hard to guess. That would be an achievement, you know. Um, but where I would go is even in that space, right? 
and in that space we probably got into this music in similar times and may, may and may not have had similarities in our course in it even in that space there are differences in perception in Abbott and typically the old can learn more from the young right at least in my opinion but like let's let, let, let's get into some interesting things like the like the language is changing okay and like I'm sitting here and I'm looking at the screen when I do these episodes nothing appears on them that's there while we're filming but for instance your pronouns are listed on your on your screen identification right mm -hmm. that on an instinctive gut level no it strikes me as odd on a real level I grasp that it's important you know yeah. what I mean and could you at the risk of putting too much on your shoulders could you give a little voice to that um well when we learn more about about a uh, maybe it maybe a group of people that uh they're getting more representation we're hearing more directly from them mm -hmm. they're starting to culturally not be the butt of a joke but start to be represented and mm -hmm. and be able to tell their stories and like learn from them and like society gets a chance to recognize their humanity and and just accept that like oh yeah not everybody's the same so what who cares yeah. you know um so that that's like always happening hopefully mm -hmm. luckily if we're lucky um and also language is always changing and updating um and not even just about equality shit right like right. it's just always it's malleable and so like of course that means that as we learn more about making sure there's equity for everyone there's going to be little things here and there that have to be updated or changed or thought about differently and so one of those things is acknowledging that we have been putting uh him or her labels mm -hmm. onto people based on what we think their genitalia looks like <laughs> right yeah I had to wait till I, till I had a mouthful <laughs> didn't you all right um and so to to not assume someone's pronouns mm -hmm. is to is to not assume you know what's under their clothes if you haven't seen it or 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 not assume that you know who they fucking are right and and let them tell you mm -hmm. right and so by offering that up myself like i'm a cisgender person i'd like to think i'm an ally to the trans community i do my best i'd like to think i'm an accomplice really but it, you always gotta there's always room to grow and do better mm -hmm. um by putting my own pronouns out there mm -hmm. uh it shows that yeah it's normal to ask people and just check in with them and make sure we know Mm -hmm. because you shouldn't assume anyone's pronoun um or gender identity uh and we should separate gender identity from sex mm -hmm. and okay. stop worrying about what's under their and that gets into that whole even just the language of i identify as you know is is new but is very real but i will admit to probably having been guilty of a cynical eye roll the first time first time it crossed my path and you know fuck me for that sure you know do you do you think when i was younger these things like this and conversations like this they were always the property of more radical communities and i think they're becoming less so and that, mm -hmm. that's a good thing they are discussed in in what I, what I guess you would say more academic surf circles and in mainstream intelligentsia do you ever feel like the radical mindset gets ahead of itself I've been reading for the last two years, for instance, the identification, the racial identification or ethnic identification, Latin X, right? Mm. Right? But I also read that it's massively rejected by the culture it labels. Now, and, and I even read an article yesterday where they were like, stop trying to anglify my language. Right. You know, and then it's, you think every so often the white school kids get ahead of themselves? Us being part of that class, you know, within generational limits. Well, I think what's what's the most helpful thing that I've ever learned as as someone that's engaged in activism and someone, you know, that I I, I do care that people feel good and I don't make them feel bad. <laughs> okay, so like on a really basic level, 
if I if I offend someone, if I make them feel bad, I usually don't want that. You know, yeah. even if I don't get it or it wouldn't offend me, like okay. why don't I'm not I don't I don't want to piss you off when I'm just fucking talking to you, you know? I, sure. So what's so what's the point? So give me give me that little course correction. Oh she oh it's she? Oh sorry about that. Okay, anyway, you know, and you move on, right? Mm -hmm. So the most important thing I learned as someone doing the work on themselves and the community mm -hmm. is that you will never ever fucking know it all. You right. will never be perfect at it. Mm -hmm. You will never fully understand the conversations that are had within a group that you do not belong to. Mm -hmm. And so your role is to just listen. And that's so maddening to me. Okay. And it was for so long that, but okay, but let me do something. I want to do something. What do I do? What do I do? Put me in coach, you know? Right. That's like, no, 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 just fucking listen. And so sometimes that means don't butt in. Mm -hmm. Like, so Dan, don't you tell other white people what to say or, you know, about like Latinx, like, like let them listen to, uh, you know, people in that community. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes it's self-education, you know, it looks a lot of different ways, but when I truly accepted that of shut mm -hmm. the fuck up, listen, you'll never get it hundred percent right. It's a lifelong journey so much stress was lifted off my shoulders really? and insane. I could, and then I could just try to do my best. Okay. And, and then when I come up against the wall or I, I get something wrong, I just, I, I move on, I fix it. I move on. I do better next time. And that's it. You know? Well, what's interesting to me while I'm hearing you say that is you're a screamer and I've listened to you and you convey your anger well on the microphone, right? Yeah. But, and I'm a, I'm a singer. I have 375,000 records out. I, I have spent my whole life sharing my anger with people. Of course, I'm yeah. talking out my ass. Um, anyway, <laughs> but I, you know, I've spent a lot of my time communicating my anger from the stage, right? Yeah. Do you find it hard to share that anger and still keep yourself in check? And all I mean by keep yourself in check is you're doing a very good job of portraying evolving perspectives, right? I have had songs that I've looked at 15, 20 years after the fact and not been thrilled with the way I write them. Ah, uh, right? yeah. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you find yourself, you know, editing your own material, second guessing yourself during the writing process? Well, you know? most of the time I'm trying to, I'm trying to get the lights right over here. It's just bright. Anyway, right. um, most of the time I'm trying to write from my own perspective. Okay. Even, even if I'm writing about a topic that doesn't affect me personally, I still want to approach it as me, Shauna. I just learned about this thing and it's really fucked up. And, and this is, this is the, the particular angle of the story. This little, like the entryway into the fuller story, this little kernel is what's really fascinating to me. I want to explore that. Right. And I, I just make sure to not speak for anyone, you know, if it can be authentic and, and sincere, then it likely, and, and I can just, you know, try to keep good practices in mind, right. then I, I likely won't be embarrassed of anything in 10 years, sure. you know? Okay. Uh, cause like, cause even, even, even if something becomes problematic or people are like, whoa, what the fuck? You know, um, I could be like, I could still say, yeah, that's what I was thinking at the time. Mm -hmm. And my views have changed or something. War on, you know I mean? war, war on women specifically, you're coming up on, you're getting close to a decade, aren't you? Yeah, okay. yeah, we're here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, you dropped an album in the fall, if I remember correctly, or you were close to it when we spoke. How did that feel to take all this work and all this labor and something that you're probably really, really proud of and have to, have to kind of, not to mega, not to, magnify the bummer, but essentially kind of have to drop it into the void. Well, from the way you framed your question, it feels like you didn't fucking listen to it yourself. I listened to it today. <laughs> oh, okay. You got me. <laughs> My homework. And it's fantastic. <laughs> what I mean is every time I've released a record, the next thing I want is to sing those songs on stage. Oh my God. Dude. And when well, I was, when obviously I, that's how I feel. Yeah. And when I was in a better position to do so, the next thing would be to go on the road. You don't know when that's going to happen. No, no. Yeah. And 
what, what we did know is that we, we wanted the album out before election day. I was like, in the very least, let's make sure it's available to people before election day in case they need it, right? Right. And not that it wouldn't be needed later, but like, you know, what, what an interesting day or time period of, of like this little bit of hope. I gotta and tell you, I'm sitting over we here. Didn't know the results. I, I'm boiling that you think I wouldn't do my research. But anyway, <laughs> um, no, I have, well, first off, my sympathies to you for those, for those conditions. Um, have you been doing, have you been, have you done the streaming thing or anything like that? You know, I mean, I think the political context and the timing of the crop is more important. So congratulations to you for that. But, you know, have you been able to explore any alternatives successfully? We did a couple, like, we did an album release party Zoom thing where we just right. talked about the songs. Um, that was kind of fun because I just got to Zoom with my band and then people right. happened to see it on YouTube and Facebook. Um, and we've done a couple acoustic performances, um, which doing one or two is fun. Uh -huh. But to like do it a lot, it's just like, this isn't this band. <laughs> like, this is not what we're supposed to be doing. This is, this is like fake or something. Yeah. Um, and, and so no, uh, we have, and we haven't done any full band stuff because we don't all live in Baltimore. I'm a scaredy cat when it comes to COVID. Um, it's, I'm kind of just like, I'm also kind of like, I'll just, I'll just wait. I'll just wait till we can play shows. Like, it's fine. I can compartmentalize. If I have a teaser, it's like, what's, what's the point of this? What's the point? Right. It's just going to make it worse. So I'll just wait till those shows. And in the meantime, I'm going to hang out with my dog while mm -hmm. I can, you know? Well, I can relate. I've turned down every opportunity to be involved in some kind of a streaming thing. Because frankly, that's not the impression I want people to get into the band. There's too many missing elements, you know? It's just yeah. like, that's not us kicking ass. And I don't want you to see us doing anything other than kicking ass. Yeah. yeah, you know, and there was a lot of talk of like, okay, around the album release, like, do we want to do like, you know, a, a show, go on, go, go find a stage, everybody wears a mask, but me, mm -hmm. everybody keeps their distance and we rock out and we film that. And we're like, one, uh, I don't know what fucking bands have the money <laughs> right. to like, to like, because ethically, you would pay the venue, you'd pay the people that even if they're your friends, they're out of fucking work too. Like, mm -hmm. so you'd want to pay people. And I'm like, well, we don't have any money for that. Okay. Right. Um, and then you'd get it mixed. And hopefully it sounds really good. And no one misses a note. And it's like, we just made an album where we did that. Right. Like you want you want to hear Warren Women sounding awesome? Buy the record. Listen to the record. We just did it. Why, mm -hmm. why try to recreate it? in a shitty way where you don't even have the magic of mm. being there in person. And so a missed note on the guitar doesn't matter as much. You know what right. I mean? Exactly. Yeah. It's the, the, the experience. It's, it's, it's a little too bare. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So right. that's, I, I think because I feel that way as an audience member, I, I'm just like, whatever, who cares? We'll wait. That's fine. When I started doing these, I had, I had a time sweet spot, right. Where I would, I, where I would always shoot for in the interviews. And in some I went longer, in some I went shorter. I've really enjoyed this conversation. And before I get out of it, I want to thank you for sticking with me through the process. Sure. And let you know that anytime you've got something that you want to pour through as many outlets as you can, you're welcome, you're, you know, you're welcome to count me amongst them. I got something. Okay, and what I was gonna say, do you have anything right now? <laughs> so I, yeah. I, I had some foresight there. Okay. Yeah, right. obviously it would be cool if everyone Bought, bought the record uh -huh. from Warren Women. It's called Wonderful Hell. We're really proud of it. Um, and it's been really helpful, uh, I think, to sort of get through this really wild time um, for people listening and, and us, us writing it and, and making it. Um, but also, because there's no way to promote a record by playing shows, um, I decided to uh make my own podcast and each episode i i take one song from the album okay. and talk about it in depth and interview the band about writing it and i get uh, an expert or an activist 
or, or, or just a really cool person <laughs> to come on the show and, and talk about what the song's about. And, yeah. and so the, it, the, uh, the podcast is called But Her Lyrics. Okay. And the first episode is the first song in the album, which is called Aqua Tafana. And it's about um, this, this woman in 17th century Italy who, who, it's a legend, right? This woman created a poison that would help women poison their husbands to get out of marriages, which they otherwise couldn't get out of, and killing them slowly. And, and the song's about a, a, a few other things too that I go into on the podcast, but I got a historian to come on the podcast and talk to me about, okay, what was Italy like back then? Why would this have been necessary? Like, nice. what, else, what else do we know too. about this? Yeah, and it was really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of fun talking to him. And I've already done a lot of the interviews for this. So I'm talking to all kinds, like people, like lawyers trying to help immigrants coming into the country seeking asylum through the Texas border, um, you know, like just, just I'm just talking to a lot of people and it's it's just really cool to be able to go in depth on each of these songs and, and what they're about and learn even more myself and to have an excuse to talk to people I, about I that. Really like, I, I really like the framing. It's, it's less narcissistic than my giant banner. Um, <laughs> it, uh, I thought I, about that. I was, I was like, who gives, who wants to listen to me? Just fucking go line by line and, well, I, and explain the lyrics. Like, let's, let's have somebody else talk. They know well, what they're I, I came through this with very minimal expectations and, and very minimal intentions. What it was, was literally that not having access to my band, the silence was starting to become unhealthy for me. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. And so I reached out to people who I'd known for a long time and who I trusted or who I'd admired for a long time. And those are the first few episodes, right? Yeah. But it was like this string of punk rock singers, right? Where I'm going with this and how it circles back to what you're telling me about the reason yours sounds intriguing to me. Some of my favorite episodes, though, have been journalists, have been academics. You know, as I was sitting here observing behavior on the far right, I got a hold of a dude who'd written multiple books on, on the Holocaust, and he'd written books contextualizing them versus, you know, the evolution of the American right. Those wow. episodes are every bit as fun as talking to my old punk rock heroes, you know? Yeah, because it's not your world. Yeah. And so it's like easy, I don't know, it's just, it's nice, it's interesting. It's e it's cool to listen to, listen to somebody yeah. else from another world, like like share share that stuff with you. Um, yeah, right. that, that's exactly how it feels. Yeah. Well, you've got, you, you, you've got me intrigued, so I'm glad we kept talking. Yeah, everybody subscribe to But Her Lyrics. Yeah, those are, that's the part I become self-conscious about, and I just have it basically on a screen after the interview's done. But I, for, for as comfortable as I can be in some ways, self-promotion, very specific, uh, how to be comfortable in it. Um, you know, I, so I worked in retail a lot growing up, right? Those are my first jobs. Okay. And you had to like, and sometimes your boss, depending on where you work, they make you sell. They make you sell. Right. And it made me sick. Like I hate it. I hate quote selling to people. Right. Like, don't like they if they want it, they want it. Who cares, right? Um, but and I felt that way with bands I was in. Mm -hmm. I, I just wasn't into this promotion thing, self promotion. And then once w Warm Women started, I was like, well, the, I actually believe in this though. Like right. I, I'm I'm selling the bigger picture of feminism and equity for everyone. Like. Mm -hmm. I don't mind selling that. That's exactly what I want. Right. And so then over the years, I got more comfortable with it. And that has transferred over to like, oh yeah, well, sometimes I have to tell people that I have a podcast so they'll subscribe to my Patreon so I can pay my mortgage this month. You know, like those are real needs. And if anyone- we were doing the help, election let's panel, tell them. When we were doing the election panel, you made it clear you wanted the album mentioned. Right? <laughs> yeah. Like- I and, made a fucking album. Everybody listen to it. It's cool. It's well, good. And for that reason, I wasn't, I wasn't going to get out without opening the door again. <laughs> you know? and, I, and I'm very much, and I'm very much glad I did. Well, thank you. Thank you for letting me uh, promo a bit. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. And like I said, you are, you are, you are welcome anytime. I'd be thrilled to have you back. Okay. All right. Thanks, Dan. Till All right. Thank you, Shana. Take care.